Hello everyone, welcome back and thank you for watching. Today we're going to be talking about collimators and grids. And really, I want to focus on, on grids mainly because grids are going to be higher yield and I think they're more important to understand. For collimators, I think that what we need to know is that we want to limit our field of view. We want to really collimate uh, to what we're imaging. That's going to reduce our scatter radiation and that's going to decrease our radiation towards the patient. And, you know, that's that's the reason why we want to collimate. For example, when you see the light in, in radiography, that light really is uh, regulated to correlate, you know, within 2% with the actual radiation field. So that's very important for us to know and that's what collimators do. Now, moving straight to grids. Why do we use grids? Well, we use grids to re reduce scatter and improve our image contrast. However, like everything in radiology, it has a trade-off. If we are reducing scatter, we're also reducing the amount of x-rays and that might, that will cause our x-ray tube to shoot more x-rays in order to get the, the final quality of the image we want different from everything we were talking before in, in like filters for example grids you have to remember their place behind the the patient so your x-ray has already gone through the patient and before going to the to the image detector the grid is there to protect from any photon that has deviated from its primary path namely being a scatter so our scatter to primary ratio it's a ratio that we're gonna see how important it is towards our image contrast in a little bit. In terms of radiation dose, we already mentioned that radiation dose is increased with grids in order to maintain a signal to noise ratio. That's the technical term. So, so far we've seen that grids can improve our image, but it's gonna come at the cost of radiation. And something that people tend to confuse is the Bucky factor. The Bucky factor is super important. And although it tends to correlate with your, with your grid ratio, it is not the same thing. Uh, the Bucky factor is really defined based on the radiation dose that you have uh, when you're using the grid versus the one that you have without the grid. So in a sense, it's the incident x-rays over the transmitted x-rays so if you have a very aggressive grid that limits the the amount of x-rays that are transmitted your bucky factor is going to be higher and that implies that your patient is going to be getting a higher radiation dose so that's very very important sometimes you can have up to five times more radiation with a with a large bucky factor so going back to grid ratio, so the grid ratio is defined as the, you can see it, it's, it's really correlated with the amount of lead or the lead lines that you're gonna have, uh, the lead strips that you're gonna have in your grid. And what it means, you're measuring the height over the width. So that's the ratio. And when you compare this to the smaller your width, that ratio is gonna be higher. So that's the width between different uh, strips of lead. So if you have a very high grid ratio, it means that you're placing a lot of, a lot of uh, strips in a, small, in a small area. And that will create a higher grid factor and it tends to create a higher Bucky factor. Just reviewing some, some general concepts in terms of the, the, our interaction that really results in the least amount of, of scatter x-rays are photoelectric interaction. So we're really here trying to limit a lot of the scatter that comes from Compton interactions. And that, that's something to, to have in mind. So when we talk about scatter, uh, we're really always talking about contrast, how we can improve our contrast resolution. Okay, with a small field of view, scatter doesn't tend to be that important. And you'll see that for some areas, we don't really need to use a grid and we're imaging other parts of the body, such as the abdomen or the chest, then we do use a grid, for example. I wanted to show this example about the SNP ratio or the scatter to primary 
this should say uh, this should say ratio, not I should remove the end there. But it's scattered to primary ratio and then the lesion contrast. And what we're seeing here is that with a with a low scatter to primary radiation, meaning that the scatter is low, then we will have great lesion contrast. However, as our scatter increases, therefore our ratio is decreasing and so is our image contrast. So you see it's a sigmoidal curve that uh, as we increase our scatter, then our lesion contrast is going to decrease. So that's something to, to know and, and, and see how it correlates with your contrast. And that's the whole purpose why we use grids in some of, the, of our imaging. So for example, a patient or a structure with a thickness of about 12 centimeters, uh, it's, it's probably going to need a grid. Our usual grid ratios, I, I wrote here, they go from 6 to 17 to 1, but our usual grid ratio is of 10. And that's mainly for radiography and fluoroscopy. I think uh, the other thing I wanted to cover is that in general, what summarizes all this that we have talked about is that a higher grid ratio results in higher selectivity, meaning that we won't let as many x-rays get past the grid and that results in a higher Bucky factor because we already talked about how that is calculated and the higher radiation dose to the patient which is also related to the Bucky factor and then the positive thing or the reason why we're doing this is because we do get a better image contrast. Um, we probably will talk about different scenarios later when we use an air gap for example, in, in mammography, when we're doing magnification, we use an air gap and that helps us uh, reduce some of the scatter and we don't need to use the grid. But the air gap technique really works better when we have a lower energy photon, such as in mammography. Okay, and I think that's it for this video. I'll come back and add some other facts to this uh, subject later when we review all the concepts. Thank you very much and please, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.